You have probably heard this before, but it's critical for you and those who depend on you. So you're going to hear it again. Don't engage in unprotected computing. Your most important protection is backups. You must get in the habit of always backing stuff up, especially when you don't think you need it. You need to do regular backups. Later you will develop your own processes. Linux newbies can start with something like this. Step 0. Assess the scope of the backup. You must figure out your changes and commitments. If you've just started using Linux, then you may only need to back up your home directory. If you are managing a system with multiple users, you should back up everyone's home directory. If you have configured the system, you probably need to back up your home directories and the slash Etsy directory. If you are managing a critical server, <laughs> you probably just back up everything. You can use the DU or Display Utilization command to figure out the size of the backup. The DU command shows the size of all the files in a directory. So you can say sudo DU slash home and find out how much space is used there. Here I'm using 232 gigs in my home directories. And 14 megs in the slash Etsy directory. Step 1. Assemble a backup kit. Here is a simple example. This is an example backup kit. I use something like this when I back up my laptop. The Ziploc bag is just to keep the card and the USB stick together. On the card I write down what was backed up and when it was backed up. This works pretty good for backups up to about 256 gigs. If you need to back up more than that you use something else. For example, when I back up my home media center I use a static free bag and I use a spare hard disk but I still use a card to keep track of what and when. Step 2. Prepare the backup kit. Before you use a USB stick to do a Linux backup you usually want to do some preparation. I've put the USB stick in, it appeared over here before I'm going to use it, I'm going to reformat it and create a Linux file system. My preferred tool for that is gpartd. When gpartd fires up, it'll show you your existing file systems. Here it's showing my main hard disk. I don't want to wipe that one out. Let's go to the next one. The next one's my backup hard disk. That's not wipe out that one. The next one is about 60 gigs. That's the USB stick. Over here we can see that it contains a fat file system. Before we can do anything to this we need to unmount it. Once it's unmounted then we can do some operations. First thing is I'm gonna just wipe everything clean by creating a new partition table. The default MS-DOS partition table is just fine. Everything understands it. Once that's done, I'm going to create a Linux partition, a new primary partition that covers the entire space and is a Linux file system. EXT4 is the current generations of uh, Linux file systems that are currently in use. If you do that, you'll be able to save all the permissions and ownerships when you do a backup. 
let's just call this thing Linux backup. The final step is to tell G Part D to go ahead and do all this stuff. Up till now, it's just queued up operations in case I change my mind. When you tell it to apply, it goes and creates the partitions and then formats them. Depending upon the size of your device and the speed of your device, this can take, this can take some time. Or not. When it's finally done and you uh, exit out of G Part D, you can probably just pop this thing out. It's not currently mounted, it's dismounted. So you're free to just pull it and exit G Part D. Step three, do the data backup. Since I'm doing this on my laptop, first step is to insert the USB stick. My laptop takes a second or so to recognize a USB stick and then it automatically mounts it. Notice it mounted it at slash media slash miles slash Linux backup. I can reference that device. I can copy things to and from it just by referencing this location. Now I could just try to do the backup by dragging things out here using the GUI. But by default, the GUI runs in unprivileged mode. And when you do backups, you always want to do them privilege so you can guarantee that you get everything. Um, the first step normally is I create a directory out there to hold all this stuff, a descriptive directory. Let's do that. Make deer. Uh, let's give it today's date. Five two one backup. Okay, and there it appears in the GUI. Next, let's back some stuff to it. Sudo so that we're privileged. Rsync. I prefer to use Rsync because it has better recovery when something goes wrong. Dash a v slash etsy. I'm going to back up my slash Etsy directory and cop tell rsync to copy it out there to this should just take a second or two because this is only 14 megs now you can see we've got the Etsy directory with stuff in it after you've finished verifying that stuff's there. Normally the next step is eject it and when the system says it's ejected then you can pull the device, put it in your backup kit and put it away somewhere safe. Step 4 secure the backup. Place the paper and the USB stick into the plastic bag and seal it closed. It'll end up looking like this. Put your backup kit somewhere at least as safe as your underwear drawer. You want it safe. You want to be able to find it when you're all panicky. You don't want somebody to steal it. Step number five, continue doing regular backups. At regular intervals, check the latest backup stick to see if there's enough space for another backup. And if there is, make a new backup directory on it and copy the folders to it again. You don't want to overwrite the existing stuff. You want to have multiple copies of it with as much redundancy as possible. Don't for, when you do this, don't forget to update the information on the piece of paper. If there isn't enough room for another copy of your backups, or if you've been using the same USB backup stick for about a year, then make a new backup kit. You want to have at least two or three generations of old backup kits. Finally, 
you also need to back up your access. The prior step secured your data, but every few months you also need to secure your access to stuff. This needs to be saved in a different place than the data. Rich people write this down and give it to their lawyer. Poor people write this down and hide it in the family safe place. Access you should protect includes your Linux username and password, your cell phone unlock or PIN code, the master password of your password vault, your encryption keys and your private keys, the account information for your major online accounts, uh, Google, Amazon, whatever is important to you, Spotify. When you write down your username and passwords for those, also include the information to recreate the two-factor. And then also back up account information for your banking and your important service accounts. You're trying to protect not just yourself, but the value to your family if something happens to you. Linux helps you to learn. Backups help you to survive the lesson.